Today's episode of Filmmaker U is brought to you by our sponsors, OWC. Go to owcdigital.com for all your filmmaking and computer needs. And it's also brought to you by our other sponsors, AJA. Make sure to check out AJA.com so that you can see how they can help you in your post-production needs. Hi, I'm Gordon Burkell from Filmmaker U at Filmmaker U. We create courses for film professionals to deepen and diversify your existing skill set. You can learn more at filmmakeru.com and of course, follow us on Twitter at filmmaker underscore you. Every week, we're joined by film professionals to discuss their work. And this week, I'm joined by mass producers, JP Woulette and uh, Dylan Matlock. Welcome to the show, guys. Hi, thank you so much. Now, I guess my first question for you guys is how did the movie Mass, you know, come to you? Like, how did it is, and it is a heavy film just for anyone watching. <laughs> it's, it's a heavy subject matter. But how did that uh, get brought to you guys? How did you discover it? Um, we worked with Fran Kranz, the writer director, about five years ago. He produced a small independent film and starred in it. And we were his production staff on there. And we just became close friends and colleagues. And we kept in touch. We, Dylan and I, had a project. We were working on a TV project that we attached him to, to be an actor in. And just always kept the, the line of, you know, communication, creativity open. And um, then one day, about three years ago, I bump into him at a cookout in, in LA and we get caught up and he's, I just sold a script and he's just talking about that. And he's like, Hey, I just wrote a script too, if you want to read it. Um, and he, he completely undersold it. He, uh, <laughs> You know, he was just like, oh, if you want to, you know, read it and give me some feedback since you're, you're, you know, you're writing now and you're doing all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, sure, man. And um, so that that's how it came to me. And then if, uh, it sat on my computer for a few weeks, <laughs> you know, as, as sometimes scripts do. Uh, I, I didn't know what I had. He, he totally undersold it, as I mentioned. And uh, I read it one night and I was just crying. It was just, I was just like, wow, this movie has to be made. And then I, I called him when I was done at like 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> well, I think I woke him up uh, and I was like, hey, I just read your script. He probably, he probably forgot he even sent it to me because um, it was like two or three weeks later. I'm like, oh, I just read your script. I'm like, we have to make this movie. And he's like, all right, what do we do? I go, you know, I don't know, but let's figure it out in the morning. And, um, and, and that was in April 2019. And then we were shooting and wrapped in November, 2019. It was the fastest turnaround I've ever had. Lucky um, too, because COVID was just around the corner. <laughs> yeah, we had no clue. Uh, Fran, Fran was worried. So, you know, I sent it to Dylan and I was like, hey, this is this is the new script. And I then I, of course, hyped it all up for him. So uh, it was undersold to me and then equally sold to the Dylan. So, um <laughs> And they then we, hype it. yeah, I, and uh, yeah, we just had a production meeting. And then when we had our first little meeting with just me, Dylan and Fran, we talked about Fran's schedule and he had a, a HBO show he was shooting in January, 2020. Mm -hmm. So that's why we were like in this rush. Like we had yeah. no idea the pending doom we were all facing. Um, so we were just in this little rush. We're like, hey, if we're going to do this movie, we have to pick a date. You know, that's kind of like Dylan and I's power in producing. We motivate our filmmakers by picking a date and just telling everyone we're shooting that day. And there's a lot of power. Every All the energy just comes to that. No matter if you choose next year, if you choose in two months, it's going to happen. So we just did that. And um, yeah, we started taking it out around town. Dylan, I mean, uh, if you want to add a little yeah we were yeah super excited uh the thing that was very cool it was reed birdie was already attached uh, because of him and fred went back from like their their days of broadway and new york theater and so we already had an amazing actor already signed on to do it so we were so lucky to to have that big piece in place and like jp said the script was amazing so we started we went around we went to all the agencies loved it when there were the clients in it. So we were very lucky we did. Um, we got to get all of our like people that we wanted the most, you know, it was, mm -hmm. it was, it was great. 
when J- Jason and Martha met with Fran and then uh, we we're trying to figure out who the last piece would be. And uh, we met and JP was like, Hey, what about Ann Dowd? And I was watching Handmaid's Tale. He was watching <laughs> Leftovers. I was watching Leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just like, we couldn't, you know, we didn't know who, who to go out to. And yeah, we were just eating lunch. And I was just like, hey, I just, I'm, I'm like, Ann Dowd's just staring at me, smoking cigarettes and like just being totally captivating. And I'm like, what about that? And Fran was just like so excited. And I wasn't watching Handmaid's Tale yet. Dylan was, and he, he was like, "This, she's great in this show too." And uh, and Fran was just like, told the casting director and contact the agents. And I mean, the biggest compliment we got from the script is she read it within 24, 48 hours, something crazy fast, which is very rare. And she was just like, "I don't know how you say no to a script like this." That that was her ultimate compliment. And then she just, of course. Uh, gave the performance of a lifetime um and the there film. was because you talked about how good the script was was there any like how did it change from that stage to prep for production or did it not, not very much wow. yeah no so one of the things that we did was uh we had a rehearsal uh a month before with the actors in new york so they got to do like kind of a, a table read to kind of like sit with the sit with it for for a month before they started shooting, and so like the the changes were very minimal from 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 what we got. Just kind of like the actors kind of giving input, like what they would and wouldn't say at, at certain points in the script. But for the most part, it stayed pretty close. Now this is a you know this is Fran's first film as a director. Mm-hmm. So what were the difficulties in getting? getting the funding with a first-time director that people might not be aware of yeah it's it's always tricky it's tricky with every film um in one of the the, our first meeting with fran we were just like hey no one's gonna finance this movie (laughs) you know it's (laughs) like um we were just kind of like super honest we're like this is a topic no one wants to touch you know like I'm like, if we make this movie, we have to make it ourselves. Um, and and so to Fran's credit, I mean, there's a Forbes magazine breakdown article about what we did. If, uh, you know, the, the filmmaker you crowd wants to, to read in depth, but we essentially started going around town. Fran put in a little of his personal savings and he mm-hmm. went around and just said, hey, we're partially financed. We're shooting on this day. And then we hired a casting director to start taking it out to the major agencies. And um, yeah, we just, it just started motivating people and it was all friends, family, business contacts that were like, okay, you guys are doing this special little movie. We're in for X amount of dollars, this little amount. And it just kept adding up and we just pulled it all together just from, people we knew we didn't want to crowdfund we didn't have energy or time for that you know because that's a that's a full-time job yeah, you know so and you got to like, get perks which is kind of weird to do for a movie called yeah it's like, <laughs> hey, you can't really do that it's uh you know so we just knew we had a a good little movie and we just went around we just went around town like we were making it with with or without people so we we're just like hey we're partially financed we're shooting on this day if you want to join, cool. If not, cool. And they're just like, okay, I, you know, once they read the script or once they heard about the cast um, and even Jason Isaacs, uh, he re- read the script uh, a, a few years, maybe a few months before, prior uh, to signing on. Cause he just met Fran and just read the script. And he was just like, Oh, this is the best script, but it'll never get made. <laughs> so, even, you know, even Jason, that's his, uh, his, his famous line. He's like, Oh, it's so good, but it'll never get made. And um, because he just, you know, he, he knows, he knows the business. So yeah. we had to kind of just, you know, pull up the bootstraps and, and do it ourselves and finance with our, our friends and family and a lot of contacts and business contacts Fran had, we were just like, Hey, we're partially financed. we got a casting director and these great actors reading and interested are you joining? You know, so it was just kind of uh, that was the nature of it. So yeah. it was it was a fun battle. Well, and it was a tight shooting schedule, fourteen days, which mm-hmm. is really tight. Like usually, people are like twenty days is really tight. And you guys are like, let's cut six out of that. How did you 
I mean, like, I know a lot of it takes place in the one room. There's like a few exterior Mm -hmm. shots or exterior moments. How did you guys tackle getting that all done in 14 days? Yeah, I think I think a big part about independent filmmaking is is setting yourself up to win. And I think we we did that with the script. And we also gave ourselves the the time really to to prep. You know, like JP and I were were out in Idaho weeks in advance, uh, just just prepping the movie, making sure that it was all ready. We had our actors do rehearsals, which like Big movies do all the time, but for for little indies, it's always unheard of. You just get like the actor on the day, and you're doing a doing a fitting like before you rush them on the set, and they've barely talked to the director, you know, a lot of times. Mm-hmm. But this, but for this, we're like, no, we have to we have to set ourselves up to win. We did the rehearsals a month in advance. We had you know a very tight script, and uh, we found a perfect location that was like accommodated us so well and then you know we brought everybody into Idaho and it became very much like a summer camp almost and just like how close everyone was uh and just how well we were able to to work together and we actually did you wouldn't believe it but we did shorter days than most we did nine hour ten hour days but wow everyone stayed fresh (laughs) the actors got to go back uh back to the hotel like have dinner and then like rehearse to talk about the next day's work, you know? So everyone was just pretty much ready to go the second they got on set. Wow. Now, so what would you say then is, um, was one of the tougher things to do as a producer for Mass? Hmm. Ah, it was, I don't know. It was, um, you know, we, we prepared a lot. So it's like, you know, that's kind of our, our style. We always like to, you know, measure twice, cut once. That's our motto in our production company. And um, so we were extremely prepared, you know, even going up to day one. Um, part of it was uh, Tony Bashera, our associate producer and scheduling master. He ran the set as like, you know, a first AD and associate producer. He helped us all with that he's kind of a genius with scheduling and we had, I guess the hardest part to answer your question was, you know, I think, did we only have Jason for eight days or something? Was he in between movies? Yeah, like we had to fly, yeah. We had to fly out. Yeah. There were some short days for sure. Yeah. So, so we, we, you know, on a 14 day shoot, we have one of our leads only for eight days and, uh, or 10 days. And then we did eight days in the room yeah. and, you know, we just had to, to block shoot the bookends of the movie with that mm-hmm. cast. So the beginning of the movie and the very end of the movie is actually the first day of shooting. <laughs> if you can believe it, uh, after you watch the movie, you're like, wow, you did that on the very first day. Um, yeah. And then, so that's the first couple of days. And then we got Jason and then did all his coverage of them driving and showing up at the church and getting into the room. And then once we were in the room, it was about eight to 12 pages a day for I think eight days straight, if, yeah. if I remember correctly. And it was, then we were just like cooking with gas. Once we got into the room, um, it, it, was, it was good to go, but we were just so prepared that we were, again, like Dylan said, we were doing like eight hour days for the most part, because one, we couldn't afford the overtime. Everyone was on payroll and we had to <laughs> count every minute. Um, but then the other was we had, we were in, Idaho in November and the, the sun goes down at about 5 p.m. So and we we're shooting out windows live for our live on location. So we'd lose the sun. And um so we just had to we just had to know what we were doing every minute of the day. Yeah. Uh because we only had limited minutes. So it was just yeah, it was um it wasn't easy in any sense, but it was, you know, we prepared and we were able to you know execute so it was yeah yeah so what do you what do you guys when you're looking for projects you know what is it that excites you about the scripts what is it that you you look for in scripts because you have a bunch in the works right now Mm -hmm. uh yeah based on your imdb yeah well one of the first things is uh is you know the story of course uh 
JP and I met working uh, like a long time ago as PAs run around, but uh, I think our partnership really started when we started writing together and talking story. And like that kind of excites us the most. So we have kind of a thing where it's like both of us have to read it and both be like super excited. And then if we're talking for like hours about the script with each other, we're like, oh, that's the experience people are going to have. They're going to be talking for hours after the movie, you know? So I think that's uh, a big part of it. And I think also, like I said, setting yourself up to win, you know, like, does it work on a low budget? If we're, if we have to shoot this movie low budget, like what are the little things that are going to make it successful? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's always story first ways because i'm like i'm the concept and plot guy dylan's like the the story the story and character arc guy you know it's like so you know we have our different strengths and when we combine and we find a project and we both gravitate to it we also call ourselves the the first audience members uh for for our movies you know so it's like we find a script and if we both like it we go okay it's not a it's not a 50 50 split in the audience it's they're already a hundred we already got a script that we both love that's a hundred percent you know so it's great to have this partnership you bounce off and have different strengths and we go hey I'm like I can see the movie poster I can see the concept and the plot and hit all the beats and he's like oh the characters go through all this and I'm like all right cool and once we know it we get the other excited about the other thing uh, the other parts and build up the script with the writer um we're getting re- really excited about um i mean we literally have a meeting today about an amazing amazing concept and script and it's just it's like next level um and then we just did little brother with like jk simmons um he's featured in it and that's a powerful movie powerful story with the director and it was just able to like I don't know. We were just attracted to the story and to the filmmakers. And like, that's, that's part of it. You know, it's like, you, you have to sell us because we're the ones that are making the movie and selling other people, you know? So it's like, um, you know, so don't undersell like he did. <laughs> yeah. Don't undersell like Brandon. He was just like, Oh, was like, oh cool, man. You sold the read my script. I'm like, all right, cool. And I didn't, even, you know, I didn't even get to it for a few weeks. Um, but yeah. So you want to, you know, we, do, we just want to be as passionate as our filmmakers are, yeah. you know, because, and that's what you want. If you're a writer or director, I mean, you want producers that are just like, this is the movie, this has to be made. And once you get that, that sense and that, that drive of like, this has to be made. And then we could, you know, you can sell, uh, you know, sell, 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 you know, snow to an Eskimo or something like once, you know, you believe it, it's like, you're out going, it's like, um then you're pitching people companies financiers and they're just excited as you are so it's like and it's all based on the story because you're bringing that story yeah. to the meeting you know then sometimes i'm meeting p- people for the first time financiers they don't know me but they know the story and the theme and what this person goes through um and they see the passion of like how dylan and i want to make this movie and that's usually you know half half the battle so it's it's a it's a wild process yeah now what you know you talked about the importance of the story and having a good story was but in editing in post-production the story is the last rewrite what what were the changes that might have been made to mass or had to be made to mass to bring it to screen one thing about mass is there was so much footage and there was like so many like it's like who's we were lucky to have such a such a great uh, editor Yegua and uh, Fran they were able to work together they were able to work together luckily before the pandemic to start so we got a lot of it cut we had like a little uh, we had a little um, like kind of friends and family screening to kind of get notes on it and then uh, and then the pandemic hit and then we had to slow down a lot but. The, you know, what was amazing about Mass was in the post-production process was there were so much like different reactions and like, all right, who's it important to stay on? Like when this beat drops, what hat, you know, who are you on or how do you, how do you tell the story? 
through all the different, you know, all the different uh, takes that we have. So that, that was definitely it for Bass. Bass didn't have hardly any music, you know, or anything like that, but it really is how could you make this dramatic uh, for people in the room, just, just sitting in a room. Interesting. Yeah. And it's, you know, that, the, the editing process was, it was just, it was, I don't know. It was like so long because this, the friends and family screening we had that Dylan just mentioned was maybe like two weeks before mm -hmm. the original shutdown, you know, that, that March, 2020 shutdown where everyone's like, okay, we, you know, we gotta head home. What's going on. Yeah. You know, like, like it was two weeks before that. So we had like this, director's cut maybe like a fine-tuned assembly and people gave like lots of notes and great creative people loved it i mean there was people at that screening like oh it's going to sundance it's going we're all like okay like we we're like this is the first you know and people like were one just, step at a time <laughs> yeah i was like oh okay like you know and then you know the world started shutting down and we still had to fine-tune the script but we had nothing but time on our hands you know um so it just Fran and Yang Hua just kept fine tuning each scene, each beat, you know, testing different things like, oh, should we be on Jason or this line? Or, oh, look, look how powerful it is when we're on Martha for this line. You know, it's just like mm -hmm. we had nothing but time. And then the color correction process and the sound mix took forever during the pandemic because it's not like it is now and there's plans and there's testing and everyone knows it was like, this was like two months, three months in and everyone, everything was still kind of closed. And we we're only, Fran was only allowed to go in like one day a week for the color correction session and sit there, give notes and then come back the next week. And like, you know, all everyone was in mass and it would, the two people would stay across the, the, the rooms and color correct. And like, there was no process yet. So yeah. that all took a very long time and we got really delayed, but it actually timed out perfect because one the, the the edit got so perfect to the beats where like Fran was taking out even breaths and stuff. We had the time to do all this stuff, so you, you can't even breathe while you're watching the movie because <laughs> you're not reminded of it. You know, it's just really cool stuff that we had um, the time to do, and um, and then the timing on the back end, it just everything got done and ready for Sundance. Just to the moment and it was just wild so um yeah it all so it all worked out what was it like to have the audience at Sundance experience it because that's one of my favorite things is when a movie's clicking and you get to be in the audience with the mm -hmm. audience so what was it like your first time getting to see it with that audience not just friends and family well, yeah um, um well, kid, so. <laughs> we didn't get that experience until the movie came out in October because our Sundance was virtual. It was the oh, first year of virtual yeah. Sundance, yeah. but it was still, Sundance was still an amazing experience, even though it was virtual and it was the first time they went virtual. Like they did it again this year, yeah. but it was like so fine tuned last year when we were in, it was just like, here's a bunch of movies and here's your avatar. Go talk to people in this virtual bar. <laughs> we're like, what's going on? Like, yeah. like we had no clue what was going on. Um, but <laughs> The first screening was actually amazing. I believe we sold because it was virtual. We ended up selling over selling over five thousand tickets. So it was like one of the biggest film festival screenings wow. of all time, uh, just because people were you know excited for the movie. That we had a great trailer and poster out, and all the buzz was already you know going, and uh, it was just great. So we had five thousand people watching. There was like a live chat box, and then the director the directing uh, programming from Sundance emails us after. And she's like, that was the first virtual standing ovation <laughs> in Sundance because like people are in the chat, like standing ovation, clap, clap. Like, and she's like, yeah. that's the first time we saw that, you know, this year. And it was just like, we were like, it was just so wild. But to answer your bigger question, then the movie came out in theaters October. And that was literally the opening well, about a few days before opening night, we had a world premiere in New York. Um, and that was the first time we actually got to see it with a theater full of people. Mm -hmm. And it was like the most connecting experience. We could hear people 
sobbing behind us and like we knew all the beats of the film so we would just wait for something and then hear people gasp and know it was coming it was just Hmm. it was amazing and then the best part about this movie is like the connection and conversation starter that it is and then everyone stood just like in the lobby of the theater (laughs) and talked for like two and a half hours about it was just like that was the best part like ever so wow now I have one last question for you guys. You know, we've been stuck in this pandemic for a while and depending on where you are in the world or what's happening, you might be in quarantine, out of quarantine. And a lot of people turn to streaming services at that time uh, for entertainment. Is there a movie or a show you discovered uh, over the break or over the uh, quarantine or sorry, the uh, COVID times that you think people should check out? Yeah, I love uh, I love The Great on Hulu. I think that's one of the most fun shows it's the dark comedy uh you know Al Fanning Nicholas Holt they're hilarious in it perfect I also really loved uh watching Mythic Quest they had a pandemic episode that happened yeah. I think two months into the pandemic that really moved me and so those were two great like for 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 tv shows that that I really loved mm-hmm. of course Mass is out on demand so that's, yeah <laughs> that's what you should watch first yeah yeah definitely <laughs> watch Mass so um yeah i mean wow i watched so much i finally watched um all the handmaid's tale so i had the time <laughs> i knew ann um i know a few i know a few other actors uh, on the show and i finally got through that i mean it was just that was a haunting uh experience especially during the pandemic during trump times to watch you know multiple seasons of that in a row that was very heavy and um, I don't think I should have done that to myself, but it's a brilliant show. Um, did, you, did you read the books before? Or? No, I, I haven't. I want to go back and, and, and read the book. It'll be um, disorienting because I read the books before and I was like, why is this here? Because they've restructured everything ooh, okay. for television. Yeah. So you're just, it, it's kind of disorienting at first because you're like, okay. how is this already happening? And then you're like, oh, okay, that's why. It's gotcha. Cool. I got yes. So, um, but re- so I, I did that. I did a, I mean, like every one of the panel, I did a, a hundred shows, I think. Um, and, um, but recently I can't tell people enough about Yellow Jackets on Showtime. Yeah. I mean, it's every beat is so fleshed out and perfect. The acting and all the this interconnecting storylines are just, it's so well thought out. Uh, Karen Kusama is the director of the pilot and a couple of episodes. She's br- brilliant. She's the, one of the best directors in the game um and everything's just i was just i was a little late to that my friend i was literally on a hike with a friend like two yeah. weeks ago and she was like you know you have to watch i was like all right finally i'll finally start it tonight and i did like three a night um and just cranked through it it's just so good the con it's so <laughs> high concept so creepy I yeah love it. My wife and I live in Ontario where they crash. Mm -hmm. And so the one thing that kept pulling us out is that we were like, but it's really, there's like so many people living in that area. Just walk, (laughs) just keep walking. You'll bump into someone. And then we're like, okay, we got to forget about that. Forget about that. Cause I mean, if they flew like eight hours North, they would be in the middle of nowhere, but it's just kind of funny that they stuck it in Ontario for us. Yeah. Kind of weird. We're like, keep walking. You'll hit like a, a Walmart. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. But Ontario for like the American audience is like, you know, it's just ice, you know, like we don't even, yeah, exactly. like we don't even know that you guys are up there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, just kidding. But I have a theory. I don't want to get into too spoiler territory, right. but I have a theory of the area they crashed in. Well, they so, like it could be like lost, right? Where yeah. Whole- so and I have that vibes. Um, it's just it's a perfect it's a perfect show. It's like yeah. I think it's the the best one going like Ozark was another good one that I cranked through during the pandemic. And I was like waiting for, I was so bummed that they couldn't film there this yeah. season, like in, in time, like from, from my addiction to Ozark, uh, that's another yeah. great one, but yellow jackets, like all great, all the actresses and on both timelines are just perfectly cast and yeah. Um, and the, the first scene in the first episode is crazy. <laughs> like yeah. what that's a hook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're yeah, you're in. And that's yeah. that's Karn. You know, Karn yeah. Kusama is just I mean, the invitation, um, just her films are just it has the same tone of that. Just it, it's all 
just perfect in my mind. <laughs> she could do no wrong. Well, thank you so much for letting me interview you guys. Yes. I mean, this was great. Thank you for yeah, having us. Good. And that's it for this week, everyone. Make sure to check out filmmakeru.com for all our latest courses. Again, thank you guys, JP and Dylan, for joining me. And of course, uh, if you have any questions, you can get us on Twitter at filmmaker underscore you. I'm Gordon Burkell. Thanks for watching. Today's episode of Filmmaker U is brought to you by our sponsors, OWC. Go to owcdigital.com for all your filmmaking and computer needs. And it's also brought to you by our other sponsors, AJA. Make sure to check out AJA.com so that you can see how they can help you in your post-production needs.